everyone. I'm Yashis from First Updates Now, and with me today is Team 10179 Tech Turtles from Florida at the Chicago Robotics Invitational event. Today, they have a very unique robot with a swerve drive, a scissors, a swerve drive, a scissor lift climb, an active intake, and a very unique over center linkage claw for the pixels. Learn more about this team and their unique robot with me on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Studica Robotics offers durable, polished, and anodized aluminum channels with several new colors coming soon to customize your robot at studica.com slash robots. No rough edges and a versatile hole pattern allows for positioning at multiple angles. Feel the Studica Robotics difference, and if you're in the USA, request a structure sample for your team at studica.com slash robots. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted at Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. So to start with the Swerve Drive, how'd you guys go about deciding that you wanted to use a Swerve Drive and how'd you go about programming programming it during the season. So I've built two custom swerves for my FRC team. So I got a lot of knowledge with it there. He's Christian over here has programmed a lot of them. Um, so, you know, we thought we could easily do it. And last year at States with our robot, we kind of got pushed around a lot in the final matches, which we think kind of hurt us. We're like, okay, we'll try swerve out. And uh, it's pretty cool, I guess. All right, so do you want to talk about how you program the Swerve, whether you used any custom libraries? Did you code it all by yourself? So we used uh, FRC style Swerve, the yet another generic Swerve library, and ported it over to FTC, which allowed us to have a very modular design for Swerve and also let other people be able to easily configure their own. And it implements second order kinematics, which means that it can effectively drive very straight while turning and we got it working in the off season and it's been really smooth throughout the season. Okay, so let's talk more about your scoring system for this season with your active intake and then your over-centered uh, linkage claw. Yeah, so uh, our intake is something that we really thought about during the season as there's so many things that we wanted to do with it. As, there, as during the game, we wanted to pick up stacks, but also just want to easily pick up pixels on the ground laying flat. So um, our intake can go up and it goes into our transfer over here. Uh, we can show you an example of running it right now. Yeah, so we have black surgical tubing over here. So this is a pretty good intake, I would say, overall. Yeah, so we had like actually like at the beginning of the season struggle because we want like the intake to go down and so and also want to have a good transfer. So one thing we did was we had like multiple iterations i will say like intaking uh from up and down was like something we wanted from the start but initially like having these plates around so pixels wouldn't come out was like an additional whole iteration we have this um little uh wheel right here so we can intake the pixels into our transfer position much later on um and yeah, you have a transfer here. So uh, for our transfer, I would say it's somewhat unique that we kind of iterated through this season, which is which are sprung plates. We have a claw here that goes into the pixels like so and pulls it out. And since these plates are sprung, you just it just goes like this. So we can show you that right now. Our claw is somewhat unique. Um, we use two linkages that push these out like so. And the benefit of this is when it's in position, these are over center. So these can't um, come back and allow us to drop the pixel until the servo commands it. So that allows us to pretty reliably place the pixels. Uh, one question that uh, I have here about your claw. A lot of people, when they're using these dual claws for their outtake, they choose to use like Axon Micros or Ag FRC Micros. Why'd you guys choose to use uh, the bigger Axon servos instead of those mini ones? Uh, we kept hearing about the people having them break and stuff. So we're like, uh, we have space for these. So we figured we just use these. And 
it also means it's got tons of power to just push through and yeah. And then one design choice I see around the entirety of your robot is a lot of the use of carbon fiber. Is there like, was there a design choice behind that instead of aluminum? Did you guys run through risks with aluminum in the past during the yeah. early season? So um, our first robot actually was all aluminum and we cut it on a plasma cutter. So it was like super warped. The plates were like curvy. And so we mounted the slides to it and the slides like couldn't even extend all the way. Um, and the robot was also too heavy which with the swerve, it was like almost 35 pounds. So it was had trouble turning. So we were able to shave by switching to carbon fiber. The plates were straight and rigid, which was nice, but they're also, it's way lighter now. So that helped. So I think it's around 28 pounds, which is still heavy, but um, it's able to drive smoothly and push through because it's still got to be a decent bit of weight. Do you want to talk now about your unique scissor lift uh, climb design? I haven't seen anyone use something like that before. So down inside the robot here, there's a worm gear and a shaft that runs across and two winches. So the winches unspool, releasing the climb, and these are just sprung. And then it pulls it back down with the winches. And at the end of the match, that means we don't fall or sag or anything. And what about your drone design? Did you go through a lot of iteration with that yeah, during the we season? Went through uh, three iterations. Um, so. The first one was uh, like sealed in the back, so the drones were kind of unreliable. Um, but and to design it, we actually used uh, generative design to connect these together and make a strong, sturdy mount for it. Um, and it's really just been testing different drones and different uh, rubber band strengths to get one that works. And then finally, uh, let's talk about the software of the robot. How many sensors are you guys using? Or, and like. I heard you guys are using like Path Planner like they do in FRC because of your custom swerve. How does that work? Yeah, so we have um, standard, uh, well, we have three wheel odometry. Uh, we were having some issues with that. I think it's just swerved uh, too many things um, going on. So we switched to two wheel, which greatly improved our accuracy. Uh, in the front of the robot, uh, we also have two cameras. This is the uh, Ardu cam. This helps with our April tag localization. And this is uh, just a regular webcam, and we use this for uh, sp uh, the spike mark detection. Um, and yeah, with the with the two odometry pods, did you notice any drift with your gyro sensor? Are you using the control hub gyro sensor or an external? Yeah, so we we're lucky enough that we have one of the older control hubs with the good gyro sensor. Um, so we haven't really had any issues with that. Um, it. When we are perfect, when we're lined up, so pretty much every cycle, we can relocalize using the April tags, which if there is drift, it kind of fixes that problem. Um, and then I guess I'll talk, you've mentioned Path Planner. Um, he's talked about it a little, but what's really cool about it, and I don't know if he has it up, is it's all a graphical interface. So it's drag and drop points on, a, on the field and you can deploy it to the robot without actually pushing code. So it just sends a small file to the robot uh, and it takes like less than a second to send and it's got a new path on the robot. Thank you guys for joining us on the Behind the Bot. Um, I hope you guys, I hope the viewers enjoyed learning about this awesome and unique robot that participated at the Chicago Robotics Invitational this weekend. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Studica Robotics offers durable, polished, and anodized aluminum channels with several new colors coming soon to customize your robot at studica.com slash robots. No rough edges and a versatile hole pattern allows for positioning at multiple angles. Feel the Studica Robotics difference, and if you're in the USA, request a structure sample for your team at studica.com slash robots.